Song of Songs on to chapter 4 uh, new themes develop um, the main point of the last section was that she overcame her fear because she saw the marriage carriage was so secure with the 60 warriors around it and she had a revelation that garrisoned her heart over the issue of fear. At this point the Lord himself, the bridegroom king, calls upon his beloved and says, listen my dearest darling, you are so beautiful. It doesn't surprise me that it has that word listen because we are so reluctant to take those words in. You are so beautiful. We very often have negative self-image of us, uh, uh, negative image of ourselves and God is trying to stir our hearts into a new appreciation. You are so beautiful. You are beauty itself to me. Your eyes are like gentle doves behind your veil. This is um, a picture of modesty. What devotion I see each time I gaze upon you. You are like a sacrifice ready to be offered. The, the, some of the things that attract God's appreciation one is our devotion to him and also being like a sacrifice ready to be offered we are allowing that aspect of Jesus character to take over areas of our character and we moved to a place of being willing to sacrifice ourselves for the sake of others. This is something that appeals to the heart of God and uh, we, know, we know that he appreciates. When I look at you, I see how you've taken my fruit, fruit, fruit of the Spirit, and tasted my word. Your life has become clean and pure like a lamb washed and newly shorn. These, uh, this is a reference to the sacrificial system in Israel, taking a lamb without blemish to be sacrificed, like a lamb washed and newly shorn. You now show grace and balance with truth on display. Your lips are as lovely as Rahab's scalp scarlet ribbon, speaking mercy, speaking grace. This is a reference to um, Rahab who placed a scarlet ribbon in the window of her property so that her property could be identified from outside so that she and those in that household would be spared of the judgment that was coming. Your lips are as lovely as Rahab's scarlet ribbon, seeking mercy, speaking grace. The words of your mouth are as refreshing as an oasis. Um, what pleasure you bring to me. I see your blushing cheeks open like the halves of a pomegranate, showing through your veil of tender meekness. When I look at you, I see your inner strength so stately and as strong. You are as secure as David's fortress. Your virtues and grace cause a thousand famous soldiers to surrender to your beauty. Your pure faith and love rest over your heart as you nurture those who are yet infants. You know, it's a very short time since she went through the crisis of fear and in that short space and time, all these qualities seem to have grown. Well, have they or haven't they? Jesus is speaking prophetically into her life. He sees the seeds of these things in her. 
he sees them budding. He doesn't see the fruit of it, but he, he is speaking into it by faith. As he spoke to Peter, um, you, what's it, you no longer be called Peter, but Simon. No, you no longer be called Simon, you're called Peter. Sorry about that. Right, now we come to a, the really quite key verses because the Shulamite begins to speak. Receiving this tremendous affirmation of the causes that Jesus sees in her, it begins, she begins to shift in her, um, in her emotions and her feelings and she speaks out and she says I've made up my mind until the darkness day disappears and the dawn has fully come in spite of shadows and fears I will go to the mountain tops with you the mountain of suffering love and the hill of burning incense yes I will be your bride. Now this is an amazing change within her. She, the fear has gone from her heart. And she makes two commitments. To climb the, the sun, mountain suffering love which is um, spoken of when um, she put, she on prior, prior occasions she mentioned it is um, I will go to the mountain of myrrh, mm. the mountain of suffering love, and the hill of burning incense, that is the hill of prayer. So these are two, the two heights, two peaks, on the mountain that Jesus had called her to come to but she had turned it down and now she's ready to go she's changed her mind she's turned and that expression is probably the thing that long the thing the Lord longed most to hear because he responds Every part of you is so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty without flaw within. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me as we climb the highest peaks together. Come with me through the archway of trust. Uh, every time I've read this, those words um, come very strongly to my heart come with me through the archway of trust are there issues in our lives that we're having difficulty handing over to him and trusting him over them what the the peak at this point seems to be first the decision but then it's going through to going through with him to the archway of trust where I no longer fret over the things that are like, like big mountains in my life, I say, I will trust you with these and I will not fret anymore. We will look down from the crest of the glistening mounts and from the summit of our sublime sanctuary, from the lion's den and the leopard's lair. Isn't it interesting that the big issues that God has with us are rarely the things that we're worried about? The, the underlying issue of trust, you know, which so governs whether we stay in peace or not. This is a lesson that has to be learned and the decision reached 
where the person is letting go of anxiety and fear and goes through the archway of trust. What is going on in God's heart through all this? You reach into my heart with one flash of your eyes. I am undone by your love, my beloved, my equal, my bride. Is it possible that we would reach into his heart and one look from us cause him to be undone? We're speaking about God, the creator of heaven and earth. And that is the power that we have with him in when we reach these levels of devotion. You leave me breathless. I am overcome by a mere glance from your worshipping eyes, for you have stolen my heart. I am held hostage by your love and by the graces of righteousness shining upon you. How satisfying to me, my equal, my bride. This is just emphasising how much power we can have with God in his heart with our love and devotion. Um, yeah, I'm held hostage by your love and by the graces of righteousness shining upon you. Grace of righteousness doesn't say, doesn't say by your righteousness shining upon you. No, by the graces of righteousness. Graces are gifts. And the righteousness of God is a gift to our hearts, for those of us who will receive him. My darling bride, my private paradise, fastened to my heart. This is that what is referred to earlier in the text, where she says, I will no longer be feeble in my heart. I will fasten myself to you. A secret spring that no one can have but are you. My bubbling fountain hidden from public view. What a perfect partner to me now that I have you. Your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit. What a beautiful paradise unfolds within you when I am near you. I smell aromas of the finest spice, for many clusters of my exquisite fruit now have grown with now grow within your inner garden. Uh, this these verses are, uh, have an amazing significance and they are really very important because what he is ad admiring is his life in her. And he compares his life, it says your inward life is now sprouting, bringing forth fruit. He's appreciating those things which are a reflection of his nature now sprouting in her. And we refer to this many times later on. Here are the nine pomegranates of passion. Pomegranate is taken from the word that means exalted. The temple pillars and the robe of the high priest were adorned with pomegranates. This gives you, so exalted is a reference to his resurrection life ascending in her. Read, I'll read the others, but I can't explain them right now. Henna from, blood, henna from heaven, spikenard so sweet, saffron shining, fragrant calamus from the cross, sacred cinnamon, branches of scented words, myrrh like a tears from a tree, and aloe as eagles ascending. You're a fountain of gardens. A well of, uh, of living water springs up from within you like a mountain brook flowing into my heart. The bride has become bridegroom, rather, has uh, 
is expressing expressing pleasure at what is happening within her um, as he refers to these spices and so on um, and you might say she's beginning to live from the inside out rather than from the outside in and that calls forth his approval he also develops a, a much deeper hunger in her um, for these qualities within her to be spread rather to receive the benefits of the spices and so on so she calls upon the north wind and she calls upon the south wind saying breathe on my garden with your spirit wind stir up the sweetest spice, the sweet spice of your life within me spare nothing as you make me your fruitful garden hold nothing back until i release your fragrance come with me as you walked with adam in your paradise garden come taste the fruits of your life in me so this is an invitation to the lord himself to take partake of those things more deeply but this the the desire is for the um for these spices not just to rest the fragrance is just to rest within the garden but the, 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 the way awake the north wind awake the south wind so these things are spread wider and wider um, um, the awake of north wind well that's inviting storms and inviting cold things that you don't like but to uh, for, for, to have this garden fully appreciated um, these things are necessary and so as the north wind comes and affects the garden with, the, with its icy blasts the uh, fragrances are spread abroad and also the issue of how we respond to that sort of thing in our lives um, we can we can develop a special spice that is actually our response to those things in, and that can be spread abroad people begin to see that it's possible to be on fire for Jesus in the toughest of circumstances there's a message for the persecuted church So, nice to have a reference to Adam in God started off with the garden and the garden he's now showing most interest in is the garden of our hearts yeah. and the state of our hearts.